Well, the game of football has taught me so many, so many things, man. Now, think about, think about the huddle we have right now, right? I tell people this all the time. There's a reason why they call it a huddle. You know, he, people have been huddling all their lives, trying to find ways to enhance each other's lives. The great teams, the great teams do that all the time. The great teams do that. The better the, the better the huddle, the better the team. And so it, it, it's simple, man, how if you huddle for all the right reasons, we wouldn't have Ferguson. We wouldn't have some of the challenges that we have in our society. But as we all know, there's always a moment when somebody doesn't belong in the huddle. And yet we have to continue to move on. We gotta continue to play. So the game of life, man, is always surrounded, starting with a hub. And uh, for me, I'm, I'm lucky enough to know that, you know, by the graces of God, man, it's, it's been a it's been a nice huddle. It's been a nice huddle. And if I just keep making sure that he's in front of me, I'm gonna be all right. Welcome to another edition of Talking Ball with the Czar. I'm Emery Hunt, the Czar of the Playbook, on the campus of Georgetown University with head football coach Rob Scarlotta. Coach, appreciate you taking time. Yeah, thanks so much for coming. Well, here's the thing, Coach. You've had a lot of success as a player, as a student, as an assistant coach, and as a head coach here at Georgetown. How has all of those wins, which have been a win in an individual way, helped form to where you are right now and help you be a better head coach? Yeah, I'm kind of a dinosaur. You know, coaches aren't in one place for for a long time, but I'm lucky to be home on the hilltop, you know, where I went to school. And um, I think it goes back to the Georgetown philosophy of uh, cure personnels. You know, here we talk about educating the whole person, so that's mind, body, and spirit. And uh, when I got into coaching, you know, it all started with my parents. Uh, my mom's a 20-year teacher in the Bronx, in New York, and my dad always coached and then taught when he retired from IBM after 30 years. And uh, put about 13 years into teaching and coaching. So for me, I, I believe that we do it the right way here. Um, I've had a chance to be around great people at Georgetown. You know, the people definitely make the place. And I've seen the incredible outcomes that our kids have had, you know, from when they come in as freshmen and what they've developed over the four years into what they do when they graduate. So, you know, all those wins and all the experiences and great people that I had from, you know, Scotty Glacken, who brought the program back in 1964 to Bob Benson who took over in 93 to working over under Kevin Kelly um, from the 2000s until I was lucky enough to get the head job a couple years ago. Um, being around all those people kind of allowed me to put together our philosophy of four for 40. You know, we talk to the kids all the time about being at Georgetown for four years to set you up for the next 40 years of your life. And that's, you know, some of my Wall Street kids or business school kids think that's making as much money as possible or the wolf of Wall Street, but it's, it's about coming here, having a lot of experiences, growing, um, getting out of your comfort zone, and being able to experience all the things that Georgetown has to offer as well as you know, being in Washington, D.C. Now, I know we've talked before about this. You're a big history aficionado as I am about college football, and yeah. a lot of people don't know about the history of Georgetown and sure. the rich football history. Yeah. Going your route and being the, the coach, the player, the student here, did that help you dive more into the history and be able to appreciate what you have here at Georgetown? Yeah, like I said, the people make the place. You know, you have uh, names like Bruce Simmons, who's the president of our Gridiron Club, and Dick Williams, and, and Rory Quirk, are the people that brought the program back um, to life. You know, two years ago, we celebrated the 50th anniversary of modern day football at Georgetown, and we're lucky enough to beat Brown on a great, you know, Saturday. It was just like a day like today, beautiful out, and got a chance to celebrate the rich history. You know, um, up on my wall over there, there's a picture of Al Blosis, who you know, at his time was the Michael Jordan and Usain Bolt kind of put together. So Georgetown's football history goes back to 1883 and um, appearances in the Sun Bowl and the Rose Bowl and, 
you know, uh, we have a huge, rich basketball history, which is awesome here. But, you know, football's had a place on the hilltop going all the way back into the 1800s. So it's awesome to be in the Patriot League and, and be able to continue that tradition here in the modern day. The strength of any college football program is tied directly to its foundation. The foundation here on the hilltop is about as strong as the Rock of Gibraltar. You guys have done a great job. Now, what pillars are you looking forward to building this year and forward on top of that solid foundation that you've already laid? Well, I, you know, I'll start with one thing, you know, every good idea is stolen. You know, there's no really original ideas, but, you know, when I got the job three years ago, I uh, put together our first letter to our alums and our alumni base and our kids, and, you know, I really wanted to lay out our three founding, uh, our three foundations. And, you know, our principles are four for 40, you know, which I talked about before, and it's, it's, a, it's all about outcomes. You know, you come to Georgetown to grow and then make sure that you're in a much better place when you graduate than when, when you got here. You know, the second term for us is, uh, is our rallying cry. You know, it's Sisu. It's a finished term. It means courage in the face of adversity without complaint. It comes from Yanni Corey, who played for us and was uh, when we were in the MAC and we were a Division III team. He's a two-time All-American. And, um, you know, unfortunately, about eight years ago, Yanni was graduated, doing really well, working in California, really successful, and uh, dove into a wave and broke his neck. Um, so from that tragedy, um, he basically spent one day in the hospital and decided that he was going to use what happened to him to help other people. And what came out of that was Next Step Fitness, which is a community-based spinal cord rehab uh, facility. Um, that's, there's one in Redondo Beach in California where Yanni's from, and there's also another one that just opened up down in Florida and one in Atlanta. Uh, we have a partnership with Stony Brook. So that term was a Finnish term. Yanni's from Finland. Uh, his family is Finnish, and I've used it for a long time with our defense and then carried it over uh, to the whole team. And basically what it means is that no matter the odds, um, we can get through it together, you know, whether that's school-wise, uh, family, football, and that's our rallying cry. If you hear practice for us and you talk to our kids, they'll understand what the term Sisu means. And then the last thing is, you know, being blessed to be at Georgetown, um, the Jesuit ideal of men and women for others. So, you know, the biggest thing that I tell our kids is being a student athlete special. You know, don't let anybody tell you that it's not. You know, it's a big deal to be able to do both things. And, you know, with that comes a responsibility. You know, if you put this Hoya head on your chest, you have to carry it the right way. There's a lot of people that came before you and a lot of people that are going to come after you that you're responsible to. So for us, we talk about being a uh, very active part of the community. We have a lot of, a uh, couple of different community services initiatives that we work with. Uh, Washington Baseball Academy here in town, Friends of Jacqueline, Ward 5 Warriors. Um, so that's just a couple of them that our kids work with. And that is huge for me that people see our players as positive members of the community and people that are really not concerned about themselves but are concerned about making Georgetown a better place. So. When you try to do things as a coach, I'm only so smart, so you try to put them in those three boxes. And um, everything we do from our career placement to our community service to really fighting through what you need to uh, to succeed here in the classroom and on the field kind of fits into those three core principles for our program. You guys do a great job of recruiting. Now recruiting is nice, but, but a fantastic job of developing players. And you know, the recruiting rankings come out, you see Team A has number one recruiting class, but I think, for instance, take Christian T. He was a high school running back. Yeah. Freshman All-American defensive end and one of the stronger guys on the football team. Sure. How important is developing players once they get on campus? I think it's huge. You know, um, high school is one thing, but the transition to college, and think about this, transition to college and transition to Georgetown academics for a lot of guys is really difficult. And for all of our kids, from our best students in the recruiting class to to you know, every kid in the class when you walk in the classroom, you're gonna be challenged. So, I think one of the things that we really work on, we actually discussed today, was how do we continue to help the kids in the transition? You know, that transition from being the best guy on your high school team to being the all-star to being being the guy to coming in here and, and you may have to sit behind a guy as a two-year starter. You you know, you got to figure out if the kid's gonna fight his tail off to get on the field and, and how he does and. You know, I, I think we're extremely lucky here because the community that we have here, you know, it all starts with the boss. You know, Lee Reed, our AD, is lights out. 
You know, um, he fights his tail off for this department and has really put some things in place for us to help us develop our kids both on and off the field. So, you know, we just opened the brand new Thompson Center, which I'll take you through uh, afterwards. And, you know, within that building, you have everything from our sports medicine staff to our strength coaches to our academic support. And all three of those things are critical to aiding the kids in the transition. And then we're all about maximizing our kids' potential. You know, my dad used to say potential is we haven't done anything yet, right? And so um, we talk about what we say is our philosophy. You know, what you put on tape is your identity. And that's an old Bill Parcells quote that I really believe, you know, you have to take kids from what you see in them and what you saw in high school. And it's your job as a football coach to take them where they can't go and make them do some things that they don't really understand why they're doing it. But at the end of the day, that's going to make them a better person, a better student and a better football player. So. You know, we you know we want to recruit talent, but number one, we want to recruit good people. And um, you know, in recruiting these days, it's extremely important to get guys that understand the football here, that understand the academics, and are grinders. You know, when you come here, you have to love both things. You know, we uh, we're not looking for the guy that's going to be the you know the 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 doctor, lawyer, accountant who likes football. We need the kid that can crush it on both sides, football and in the classroom. And, and honestly, we talk to the kids a lot about be where you are. It's tough to stay in age with technology and phones, and I'm going to sound old, but you know, we tell the kids, if you're on the football field, be here with us. You know, if you're in biology class, be there. And I think that that's really important. And the transition period for the kids is the most important thing. Um, you know, the best thing about freshmen is they become sophomores and hopefully you're helping them along in that process and, and you're getting them to really maximize their potential. And, you know, if you look at some of the players that we've had that have been all league, um, you know, they came in and they really developed from when they were freshmen until they were seniors. And, you know, that's a credit to the coaching staff and the strength staff and, you know, lucky to be surrounded by really good people and great teachers. So hopefully, you know, we can continue to upgrade the kids we're recruiting and continue you know, to do a better job than we've done developing them because, you know, it's a challenging conference, challenging schedule, and uh, we need to be able to get the most out of every kid that we bring to the hilltop. You touched on how students have to have the love for the game and on both ends, but as a coach, I think you also have to have that same love, and I can tell every Saturday I've called some games, you're out there passionate um, before the game, during the game, even after the game, you still look like you can go coach another game. Um, so what is it about the game that you love the most? You know, I grew up with it. You know, uh, you laugh at this, but you know, in my hometown, you had to wait till you're eight years old to play. My wow. dad took me two towns away when I was six, and got me in that league for two years, and then I moved over to where I was supposed to be. So, um, the thing I love about the game, and I tried to explain this in a leadership class that I was lucky enough to be asked to speak at here on campus. It's um, so take our organization. We have 90 football players and you get to play in a game, which is supposed to be the big deal, which it is. You know, everything we do is to, to win a championship, go to the playoffs, try to win a national championship. But our kids work 365 days a year. On average, we'll play, let's call it 30 guys out of 90 on a Saturday, maybe more, but let's call it 30. There's 60 kids that still work 365 days a year, may not play in those 11 contests, and they come back year after year after year. So the games are really important and the game is really important, but the culture and the brotherhood and the lessons that you learn from it are the things that make it special for me because football is really unique and it's the greatest team game. You can get a lot better with one recruit, but you can't win a championship. And it's different than other sports in that respect. There's 11 pieces that all have to fit together and you really deal with the adversity that you're gonna find in life in football. And that could be in a practice, that could be in a workout, that could be in a game. And you're allowed to be put in these pressure situations where it's not dire. You know, it's really important, but you're learning how to deal with adversity. And we talk about next play and things. When our kids have success, we want them to react the same way they do when they fail to play. But at the end of the day, we want them to keep swinging and compete. Um, my greatest friends and best friends in the world that I played with from grammar school all the way through Georgetown, um, they're all through the game. And the game's given me so much um, in the way of the relationships I've been able to build with coaches. And, you know, this will be, I can't believe I'm saying this, this will be my 22nd season coaching football. So, 
you multiply that by all the kids I've had a chance to coach and I've learned a lot more from the kids I've coached than I've taught. Um, the best thing about me is I know I don't know and it's every year it's different and you know coming to work you know it's I'm a football junkie so I can't wait to get here and you know trying to build this thing is, is an incredible challenge and it's uh, it's I couldn't really think of doing anything else. Coach, there's a lot of options. We talked about how kids have so much at their disposal as far as choosing where they want to go to school. Back when we were growing up, you probably only saw seven schools on TV. Sure. You know, you had the one whack game late at night, yep. you know. Yep. Um, but now you can watch anyone on television. And so they have a lot of options. So they're more familiar with programs like Georgetown and, and other programs. But why would a student athlete choose Georgetown University over anyone else? I think it's a combination of two things. You know, I described 4 for 40, you know, before and with technology today and, and with the scouts and those types of things, you know, we have kids that are in pro camps. We have guys that are running combines, you know, guys that are getting good looks at that level. Um, but the football combination with school here is the number one reason. You know, from a Georgetown standpoint, if you're good enough to be a pro ball player, they're going to find you. And Average career in the NFL is three years, you know, so take that out of it. So the football aspect is really important, but Georgetown University is one of the best universities in, in the United States of America. But it's not just the rankings or the job you can get when you come out. It's the network of people. So, like I said, I, I go back probably 30-something years with the program, and I've never picked up my, you know, my best recruiting tool is my cell phone. I can put it on the desk and say, listen, you know, if you come in here, hopefully you're, you're not dumb enough to pick to be a football coach for a profession, right? <laughs> but if you want to do anything else, I have a guy. You know, that's a joke. I get made fun of all the time because I'll say, I have a guy. You know, if you want to be FBI, we got guys. If you want to be on Wall Street, we got a million guys. If you want to be a lawyer, you want to do Teach for America, you know, anything it is from teaching and coaching to Wall Street to some of the most, you know, craziest jobs you'd think for our guys. There's somebody in the Georgetown network, in the football network for that, and if not Georgetown football, in the Hoya network. So it's not uncommon when I recruit, I'm all over the country recruiting, and I'll have Georgetown stuff up, and somebody just walks up and goes, Georgetown, Hoyas, and you just start talking, and there is that feel here in that community that's built throughout the campus because of the core principles, the Jesuit principles that are there education, mind, body, and spirit, education of the whole person, that community is, you know, the class next year will have, for the Georgetown University, will have every state, 60 different countries, and, you know, that's the community that's Georgetown. So they'll get 22,000 applications for about 1,350 spots next year, okay? They try to alumni interview every kid. So when you look at the scope of it, all the states, 60 different countries, they're gonna have somebody that's an alum in that area to interview every one of those kids. So when you talk about where can you go with a Georgetown degree, it's worldwide. So the reason you choose here is because of the people in the community that you are welcomed into. And then once you're in it, you know, you're a Hoya for life. And for me, that's how we're gonna build this to be a championship football program. We have all the things here. We're in the nation's capital, most powerful city in the world. We have Georgetown University, one of the best universities in the world, and the professors and the people here get it. They understand that it's not just about athletics, it's not just about the academic piece of it, it's all of it together. And I think that's what makes it a special place. I, I've never been anywhere else, so I don't know, but I can tell you what our community is like and that our guys take care of each other. And I see it, you know, we had one of our big alums in today, came in the weight room, saw our guys at workouts, and. It, it was almost like they were playing together. Coach, I, I tell you what, man, I've been here three years seeing you put your hands on the ground and build this thing to where it's a formidable program and it's getting better. You know, from the recruiting side, the on-field side, kids don't quit. I'm definitely enjoying watching this thing continue to grow. I'm excited to see where it's going to go from here, and I appreciate you taking time, showing me around yeah. campus, and giving me a piece of your program. Sounds good. Appreciate your time. No problem.